Hey guys, this is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World Electronics. I have here my coil winding jig. I want to apologize for the delay in getting to the coil winding part of the project, but it has been very unpleasant weather outside, and to save you guys some time and trouble, I'm going to do you a favor here. I'm going to measure out 150 feet of these two uh, spools of wire, and then I'm going to count how many times it takes to wind it around to give you a rough idea because I've done extensive study in the past weeks to find out the best amount of wire for your Bedini motor and even John himself was an experimenter and he showed his results of his experiments as he went through on the fly but with time it gets to be confusing exactly how many is the best amount of winds which is how many times around you wind the wire on your spool one article says 850 times one says 450 times my first uh, spool was 850 turns and I don't know how many feet that was but we're going to be scientific today and most of the things I've read says 130 to 150 feet. So, I have gone out and measured. It's a beautiful day today, finally. And not raining for the first time in a long period. So I've gone out and measured 150 feet in our yard. And fortunately, from one stake to another is 150 feet. So I'm going to string out this wire, starting on one stake. I'm going to, I'm going to wind it on one stake. I'm going to run across the yard to another stake and cut it off at that point giving me 150 feet of wire with about a foot or so extra for uh, soldering and uh, connections. Okay, So I'm going to take this out and string it up. Again, the delay is because for one I couldn't figure out exactly how much wire I wanted to use for this build and I spent extensive time studying to be sure and also because the weather was pretty horrible and I'm going to have to do this outdoors but when I'm done, you won't have to. I'm going to tell you exactly how many times to turn this. Okay? See you outside. Okay, guys. I'm going to start here with my coil winding jig. And I'm going to start the wires out here. you got to find that start. All right, I'll be right back once I find the beginnings of these. Be right back. I've got the wire on here. Can you see it? It's hard to see, I think. All right, it's very fine wire. Now I'm going to walk the spools across the yard. Now, instead of messing with the camera, forgive me for this step, I'm just going to walk this across the yard to the last stake in the yard and then tie it off and cut it. And then I'll have my 150 feet. Okay, so forgive me for not recording this part because I just can't mess with the camera with wires flopping loose all over the place. All right, so we'll be back in a few minutes with that. Here's the shiny wire on the ground. You can see it. All right. All the way across the entire perimeter of this fence line. All the way to the back side. I think you can see it there in the grass. I won't make you tired or dizzy with this. And there's my coil winding jig on the ground, 150 feet away. I'm going to cut the wires here. And then I'm going to start them on here. I got to get a piece of tape. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. I'm going to cut these off one at a time. Oh, it roughed up the plastic a bit on this rough uh, thing. This is not the smoothest piece of metal for the job, I guess. But it did the job. I want to cut this and I want to secure it on the spool. Okay, it's good. I thought it would fly farther than it did. And now, what they did, let's see if I can figure that out myself. They put a loop and then came around through the loop and over the edge and taped it. I'm going to do the same thing on here to preserve my wire for next time. Okay, and cut this. 
Make sure it doesn't go running off too much on me too far. Oh, that one unwound some. Undesirable. Okay, now same thing. Double back, come around, oops, a little bit further. I just want to make sure that this wire is tied off for me so I don't have a mess later. Oops, that was smart. And that's how they did it originally on the spool and then through the side tape it and then that's not going anywhere these now we can set aside now I've got to take each of these together all right and I want to start them on the new spool of wire with enough extra for me to uh, deal with. Let me slide this over some more. I hope I'm still in a camera zone or camera range. I definitely want some excess wire on here to deal with later for wiring this up. This will be the inside of the of the uh, spool. Okay. So I want to. I'm gonna come around. Let me see. I'm gonna put a piece of tape on the outside here on the edge. Okay, secures that nicely, and I'll see on the other side, that'll be good, all right. And then this, I'm just gonna get out of my way here. Let me tighten this up a little. I'm gonna tighten up the uh, pressure on the spool so it doesn't give me any trouble. I gotta tighten the pressure on my handle so it doesn't loosen up on me on my jig. Okay, good. Now, I want to go in a clockwise direction. I want to wind this wire in a clockwise direction according to the uh, Benini notes, okay? So I'm going to curl this up out of my way and tape it onto the side. So that's out of my way and doesn't give me any trouble. It does very much help to have some sort of a coil winding jig like this to do your work. Okay? Otherwise, your job is going to be a little bit more complicated. Okay, now, I'm going to put these back on here so they're out of my way and off the ground. Actually, no, you know what? I'm going to get these right out of here. I'm going to put them over in the workshop so my uh, jig is lighter. Leave the tape on here. I'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, now, with the spool, with the wire on the left side of your spool, you want to wind this in a clockwise direction, okay? So I'm going to hold this, all right, and I'm going to wind this in a clockwise manner. The wire is going around in a clockwise manner, okay? Now, I'm going to back up. I'm going to count this, and I'm going to count how many turns I make, so it's going to be awkward for me to do on camera. All right, so uh, forgive me, but I'm going to wind this. With each rotation, I'm going to count how many turns so that you don't have to do this crazy measurement outdoors like I am. We'll see you at the other end. We got 491 turns right now. It's 92, 93. I'm going to take it off here. Okay, I have 495 turns, so um, I'll get into details on the coil in a minute. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind this out of my way, the end pieces of the wire. And then I'm going to wind tape around this so that there's no chance of this coming undone on me ever. Okay. Let 
when I put a couple turns of tape on there, the idea is so that this can never be harmed, even if something bangs on it in the, in the future, it won't be harmed, and there's less chance of that coming apart on me in the future. Now John Bedini always just put a couple drops of super glue on the end of the coil and call it good. But I prefer taping. I've always taped my coils like this. Tape's never done me wrong. Okay, there we have our coil. Um, uh, let me pause my camera. Okay, now, I'm going to go into all detail in the article. I did this outdoors so that you don't have to, okay? I've gone... Uh, it's been a lot of study for me and a lot of trouble. My first coil ever, I just did 850 wines. But since then, I've seen a lot of talk on forums about 130 to 150 feet being the optimum size. The schematics I'm using say 450 turns. I didn't know which way to go, so I've been really heavily studying to show you which way is the best way to go. That's why it took me so long, okay? Um, like I said, the original Bedini said 850, and that's what I went with, and it works. But I've been reading a lot on the forums that anything over 130 to 150 feet doesn't do you any much more good. It doesn't make any difference. So you're just spending double the, the, the cost on your wire for no added benefit from my understandings on reading forums. Therefore, I needed a good day of weather to go outside and measure 150 feet so that I could then spool it on here and count how many turns it goes. Okay, So somewhere I read 450 turns. That falls perfectly in the neighborhood. I'm going to go with 450 times around, uh, rotation. There's top, down, there's one rotation, okay? 450 turns is what I would advise you. I'm, I have 500, that's what I'm sticking with for future coils. Give or, give or take a couple winds, if you mess up where you're going, I wouldn't unwind a whole coil. But now you have a number to go with for yourself. I'm going to write this all in the article. And that's it for winding the spool. Making a coil winding jig like this, guys, is going to help you so much. Really, this is the easiest coil I've ever made. To date, I've always done it by hand or with a drill. And this was the absolute best. So there you go, guys. Winding the Bedini coil. Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World Electronics. Watch out for the next video. We're going to be putting the, the metal in the middle for the magnetic effect of that and uh, we'll come back very soon so stay tuned thanks for watching please do subscribe like and share and uh, if you haven't seen the first video check it out on how to build a bedini motor step by step